Today we're gonna make buns, but not just any kind of buns. We are gonna make pretzel buns. They are simply amazing and perfect for so many different things. Welcome to The Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life, using real food, and we keep it real simple. Today's recipe is for pretzel buns. Oh my gosh, they're so amazing and they're easy to make. Yes, I know, a lot of people don't wanna make their own bread, but let me tell you, this one's super easy and it doesn't even take that long, okay? I'm using my air fryer pretzel bite dough recipe. It comes together super quick, it's even quicker if you have a KitchenAid, but you can do it by hand as well. All right, so let's get right into it so we can get the dough made and then into, well, I'm gonna use the Ninja Foodie to proof it, but you could put it in a bowl and proof it right on the countertop. All right, the first thing we're gonna add in is the yeast. I have two and a quarter teaspoons of instant yeast, okay, so I don't have to bloom it or I don't have to proof it first, meaning I don't have to combine it with warm water and let it sit for 10 minutes and get frothy. I don't have to do that, it's instant. You can use rapid instant yeast or a different kind of instant yeast, okay? But if you're using active dry yeast, you are gonna have to proof it, okay? And the way that you proof it is gonna be similar to the way I make this recipe. So you can just follow along and then you just wait 10 minutes where I don't have to, okay? And that's because of the size of the yeast granules. In the instant yeast, they're smaller, they activate quicker, okay? One tablespoon of sugar or you could use honey. That's perfectly fine. Three quarters of a cup of warm water. I like to use water that's about 115 degrees, but anywhere between 104 to 115 is perfectly fine. If you get up above 120, you can kill the yeast. So make sure it's below that temperature. Three quarters of a cup goes right in. Now, if you need to proof your yeast because you're using active dry, what you would do is give this a little stir with a spoon or even you could use this and let it sit for about 10 minutes, okay? And it'll start to get real puffy and airy and bubbly. I don't have to do that, so I can go right in with my flour. I can put this down if I want and do a little mix, but it is not necessary, okay? So usually I don't even do that. I just go right in with the flour. Two cups of all-purpose flour. You could use bread flour in this recipe and it would be fine, but you may need a little bit more liquid, okay? Because bread flour absorbs more liquid. So if you wanna use bread flour, then add in the three quarters of a cup of water, but have some extra handy, because after we start to mix it, you might need to add in some more. That's only for bread flour though. I have a half of a teaspoon of salt and I usually add that at the end, right when I start mixing, so that it doesn't sit right on top of the yeast because salt, is great in bread, but it can also inhibit yeast um, development. So I don't put it in until after I get it mixing in the flour in. So I mix on speed two on my mixer, which is a low speed, until it pulls all the flour in and starts to come together. Then what I wanna do is scrape it off of the dough hook a little bit. It's gonna be very sticky and you want it that way, okay? We still have a little bit more flour in this bowl that it's going to uh, kind of absorb, see right here on the side. So we're gonna let that, um, let the dough pick that up off the sides. And then we're gonna knead it for about three to five minutes on medium speed, okay? So now I go up to medium speed, which is you know somewhere between four and six on your mixer. All right, that looks good. It's still sticky and it's going to be, okay? Cause it's a nicely hydrated dough. Um, but you can see it really cleaned up. Most of the bowl got all that flour off the sides and it needed for about three minutes. That's all I, that's all I did it for. You can do it for longer, but don't go much past five minutes. If you're doing it with your hands, let me talk about that real quick before I start to get into, um, into proofing it. Let me just, talk about this. Okay, the first thing I do, if I'm going to get it out of this bowl um, with my bare hands, is I usually 
coat them with a little bit of oil just so it doesn't stick as bad. But if you're gonna need this, so you have your dough, you mixed it up in a bowl, and you need to knead it by hand. Let me just show you how you're gonna do that, okay? So put it down on a clean surface. You can put a little bit of flour down, but you don't wanna use too much flour when you're kneading or you're just going to dry out your dough. So you're gonna go down with your palm, push it out, it is sticky, fold it back, do that again, rotate it, and you just keep going in that motion and you're gonna wanna knead it for about 10 minutes, okay? Somewhere between eight and 10 minutes. When it is ready, it is smooth as a baby's bottom and it's ready to proof, okay? So now it's not even sticking to my hands anymore. Um, okay, now I'm gonna proof in the Ninja Foodie, so I'm gonna add a, just a little bit of oil. That's even optional, you don't really have to, but I just don't want my dough to stick too much. Coat it, put it in there, and now I'm gonna set it at 95 degrees on the proof setting on my Ninja Foodie and let it go for about 30 minutes or until it's doubled in size. However, if you don't have the Ninja Foodie or any other appliance that proofs dough, all you have to do is put it into a bowl, cover it, let it sit on your counter for anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes. You want it to double in size. That's the important part. Timing doesn't matter really because the warmer your kitchen is, the more likely it's gonna proof quicker. The colder your kitchen is, it's gonna take longer, okay? But double in size, and then we're ready to proceed to the next step. Should be doubled in size, which it is. It looks really, really good. So now I'm just gonna pull it out and sort of shape it into a ball. And then we're gonna split this ball into four equal sections. If you want precise uh, measurements, then you're gonna to want to use a scale. I don't worry about that. This is about a pound of dough, and we're gonna make each of the rolls four ounces. But again, I don't worry about doing the uh, scale. I just basically eyeball, cut the dough in half, and then cut each half in half again. And if one looks or feels like it's a little bit, a little bit off, I'll just do that. See, easy peasy. All right. Good, okay. So we wanna have four buns. You can double this recipe, by the way, if you're going to cook it or bake them in the oven, that's perfectly fine double all the ingredients, make double the amount of dough. I mean, you could triple it, quadruple it, really doesn't matter, in the smaller mixer, so you don't wanna go too much more than probably tripling. Okay, now let's form our buns, okay? First thing that I like to do is create tension on the top of the roll or bun. So I do that with a baking mat, or you could use um, your countertop if it's clean or cutting board, something like that. Don't put any flour down at this point, okay? Put your dough ball down and you can shape it by pushing it underneath with your hands and moving it around. So I'm just making it a circle and pushing underneath, creating tension on the top. When I start to see little bubbles start to form on the top, you can see them here, 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 and here. I know I have enough tension. So then I'm ready to push it down into the shape that we want. What I try to do is get it about four inches or so because it's going to shrink back up as it sits, but it's also gonna rise a little bit as it sits. So I press it out into about four inches. Then I will add a little bit of flour right here to the side. You can put the flour on top a little bit too and move it over here. Flour just helps it not stick and that's fine, just like that. Now, another way to do it, if you don't, if you don't want to do this motion, okay, if you're not comfortable with that, another way to shape rolls is to kind of flatten it out a little bit, form the tension this way. So move the ball of dough and kind of squeeze it so you're popping the top, okay? That's going to create tension as well. And then just tuck that extra underneath 
and press it out. So either way is fine, whatever you um, are more comfortable doing. And I'll repeat that for all of the buns. Okay, then cover lightly with either a towel or some plastic wrap. And now I'm gonna use the foodie for this, but you could use a pot on the stove. You wanna fill it with 10 cups of water and bring that to a boil. Then we're gonna add in a half of a cup of baking soda to make our baking soda bath. That is the difference between a regular hamburger bun and a pretzel bun is we boil it first, okay? In a baking soda bath. That gives it that dark exterior, that chewiness, and that pretzel taste. So we're gonna let this come to a boil. It's gonna take probably about 10 minutes or so. Then we will add in our baking soda. Meanwhile, these buns are resting and they are gonna rise a little bit. So by the time the water's done, the baking soda's added, these will be ready to get into the bath. And we do that for about one to two minutes, okay? Once you start to see the water boiling, little bubbles are forming, add in your half of a cup of baking soda, and it is going to fizz quite a bit. This is another reason why I like using the Ninja Foodi, because it's big enough pot with 10 cups of water, it doesn't overflow. I've overflowed it on the stove before. Give it a little stir and make sure it comes back to a full boil before you add in your um, buns. All right, we are boiling away. Now what you wanna do is take a large slotted spoon. And I know everyone makes fun of me. It looks like a kitty litter scoop. I promise you, it is not. It is for food. And I get it from Pampered Chef and I love the size of it. It's like a big shovel here. Gently lift your buns Place them on your spoon, slotted per preferably, and dunk it in the water bath. You can add all four of them at one time, that's no problem. Unless you're using a smaller diameter pot on the stove, then you don't wanna overcrowd them, but four will fit here in the foodie. All right, now I let them bathe in this boiling water for about a minute per side, okay? And then I'll place them on here and then we'll talk about how we're gonna bake them up because there's several options. All right, well, time to flip. and then go another minute and then we will remove them. Okay, now flip them back over so that when you put them onto your plastic wrap here, they are smooth side up. All right, you can turn the foodie off. All right, now let's talk about, first of all, can you skip that part? No, you can't. We're making pretzel rolls or pretzel buns. If you skip that part, they're not gonna be anything like pretzels. They're gonna be buns, okay? So no, you can't skip it. You gotta do it. It's baking soda and water, super easy. So don't skip it. There are so many recipes I see out there online that say, you can skip this if you want. No, you can't. <laughs> okay, now I like to brush them with a little bit of butter now and then put a little bit of pretzel salt on. This is just about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of melted butter. So we're gonna brush that all over the top of each of the buns. You can save the leftover for after they bake. You can brush them again with some butter if you like. Okay, and then just sprinkle over your salt. 
Now you're not going to see it right away, but as the as the uh, dough browns in the oven or in the combi, because that's how I'm going to cook mine, you will start to see they'll become really dark, and then you'll see the white salt on top. Okay. All right, now let's talk about cooking. I just gave it away, right? I'm gonna use the Ninja Combi, which is one of the newer Ninja appliances. And let me explain why I've decided to debut that for something that can be done a ton of different ways. You can bake them in the oven. They turn out amazing, okay? They're really, really good. But I don't have a steam oven, and it's kind of a pain for me to put some steam, like a, a pot of, of water in there to steam. I just, it's just cumbersome. The Ninja Combi does that for me. So it's really easy to set up. It's a quick bake. It's just, it's just a beautiful way to bake these buns. So if you have the Ninja Combi, use it. If you don't, do not worry about it. Use your oven, okay? And it's gonna be perfectly fine. And you're gonna bake these at 375 degrees for about 15 minutes or so. You'll know when they get really nice and dark that they are ready. And you can take an internal temp of the dough and it should be reaching about 205 to 210 when they're completely cooked. So use your oven, no problems. If you wanted to make a half of a batch of dough and you just wanted to cook one or two buns, you can even use your Ninja Foodi. You can use, or any air fryer, you can use your air fryer or steam and crisp works fine if you have that function on your Ninja Foodi. I'll have those instructions in the written post. Um, I don't wanna make this video too long. So let me grab the combi, get it set up, and I'll show you how beautiful these bake up in this Ninja Combi, which is a steam oven. All right, so here is the beautiful Ninja Combi. It's my first time using it on camera and I just absolutely love this thing. Okay, so it comes with a tray. I'm not gonna, this is not a review for it, so I'm not gonna get into it big time, but it comes in with a tray. I don't have that anywhere here on set. It's over in the other room. And it also comes with what we would consider an inner pot. Okay, this always has to be in when you're cooking on the lower level and there is a rack, okay, that goes inside. So we're using this as a steam oven. So what we wanna do is add some water to this pot here. I'm using a quarter cup of water only. I just want a little bit of steam for these buns. You can use more if you're doing a bigger loaf of bread, you want a longer steam, you could do that. I'm using Combi Crisp. I'll get into why in just a second, but the steam time is not something you set on this oven, okay? It's a very short period of time to preheat it, and then it sort of steams and bakes at the same time, okay? The steam crisp only takes probably, I don't know, three minutes or so of preheat, and that's when it's heating this water up. But it works brilliantly, and I've made this recipe all kinds of different ways, like oven, foodie, air fryer, all kinds of stuff. This one was my favorite, okay? All right, so now that we have the pan with the water and we have our rack in, you wanna cut a piece of parchment to just fit the bottom. You don't want a lot of excess because we're going under steam crisp. So that means we're gonna steam and we're gonna air crisp. The air crisp has the fan that goes around, so it blows the parchment. If your parchment is like up here, you know, up on the edges, it will collapse onto your rolls and they won't get brown on, on that area. It's not the end of the world. I've, made, I've done that several times. That's how I know. Uh, but it does impede the browning. All right, we're gonna lift one up and we're gonna put each one of these buns in the corners here. The parchment paper is important because otherwise these buns will stick. Okay, even if you're cooking them on the in the oven, you're gonna wanna line your baking tray with parchment paper. All right, so let's get this in. We're gonna put it right in the bottom here. Close our oven door, turn the combi on. It's got a little switch up here, so we want it to be in the up position. This is for the combi functions, meaning steam and bake or steam and crisp, combi meals, that kind of thing. So we're gonna have it up like that. If it's over to the right here, it does the functions on the right-hand side, okay? So we want it up here. We wanna set it to combi crisp, so we're gonna go down one, okay? 
That is very important because we only want the steam for a short period of time. Okay, we if you do combi bake, it's a much longer preheat, longer steam time. We don't want that. We want combi crisp. And we're going to take the temperature down to 350 degrees and the time we're going to take to 15 minutes, but I usually take them out between 12 and 13 minutes, okay? But I leave a little extra on the clock just in case you know, I need to go longer, but usually they're done in 12 to 13 minutes and then hit start. Now what happens is the water in the bottom will be heated up. It'll produce steam. This whole window is going to get real steamy. You're not going to be able to see in there. Then it'll switch over to the upper heating element with the fan for crisping. And that's when things will start to clear. You'll be able to see in and there is a button in there. There's a light in there. You just hit this button to turn it on. It will automatically go off though in just a few seconds. Oh, oh my goodness. I forgot. I have to score them. Well, you don't actually have to score them, but I'll tell you, it does help them look kind of fancy. Okay. <laughs> I almost forgot. Okay. So you can make two slits, three slits, an X, a, whatever, a cross, whatever you want to do. I happen to like them when you do a long, cut right down the center and then two cuts on each side. Use a sharp knife or if you're a bread maker, you can use your bread lame if you have one. All right. I actually have one, but not handy. So one slit down the middle, two, and I prefer to do this when they are not in this container, in this thing. I usually do them when they're out on the cutting board, but you know, I made a mistake here. All right. <laughs> I'm glad I remembered though, because they do look so pretty. They open up and you can see like lighter dough and it's just, it adds a lot of interest. It's beautiful. It's not as important for the rising for these buns like it is for bread. You know, that's why we score it, but um, I like to do it. Okay. I don't even have to do anything because it just remembered where we were. So now we go right back into the preheat, which probably takes, I don't know, four six minutes. I haven't timed it before, but I think we will today. So we'll let you know exactly how long it takes. So it took just about three minutes for the preheat and then it switched over and now we are crisping up our buns. I don't know if you'll be able to see in there yet. I'll turn the light on because it's still kind of steamy. But within about five minutes, that steam will go away and it'll be nice and clear and we'll take another peek. All right, so um, let's go ahead. All the steam's pretty much gone, so let's go ahead and turn the light on, and you can see how nicely they are browning up, but they're not quite done yet, so we're gonna keep on going. And remember, I usually take them out between 12 and 13 minutes, okay? So you don't want them to get too dark, so keep an eye on things now. Anytime you're cooking, it's important that you use recipes as a guideline, but keep an eye on whatever appliance you're using to cook with, because things do cook differently, okay, in different appliances. Speaking of which, I want you to know that I really did test this in all these different appliances. So I'm going to go through what I did yesterday. I made a batch of these and I cooked them in the oven. This is the one that was in the oven. It's perfectly fine. Maybe it could have gone a little bit longer. I set my temperature to 375 to start and then I bumped it up to 400 to get them a little bit browner. I think I would do 400 for the entire time in the oven. So but they turned out, they turned out nice. This one was in the Ninja Foodi using steam and crisp, and I thought it worked out just fine, okay? It just wasn't quite as good as the steam crisp on the combi. And then this one was straight air fryer, again, worked fine. I did a temperature of 325 in the air fryer, and I will say that it's a little bit harder on top. That's, that's really the only difference. See, this is nice and soft, this is a little bit harder. We didn't have the steam for this one. That one's soft. This one is soft, okay? So I really did test them. They really do work in, in all types of appliances, but the combi was my favorite. All right, it's been 12 minutes. Let's go ahead and take a peek by opening the door. Now still steam is coming out, okay? But most of it is gone. So it, there's no problem with opening the door and then closing it again, okay? No problem at all. I will close it right now so that the heat um, doesn't escape. And it says add pot because it's not going to start back up until I add the pot. These look so good. 
And this is what excites me the most, guys. Look at the bottom. Oh my gosh. No flipping needed. All right, let's go ahead and take a temp. And we are at 210, so I think that we're good to go. So that was a total of 12 minutes, plus it took three minutes to preheat, so a total of 15 minutes, which is in line with the other ways that I've baked them. They take about 15 minutes of total cook time in the oven. So we're good to go, so I can just turn this off. Now, let's talk about how to cool them. You know, if you've watched my videos, I am a huge proponent of taking everything out of the pan, putting it onto a cooling rack, but I don't do that with these. The reason being is because right now, they're kind of hard on top. Now, I want these for a burger bun, so I don't want them to be hard. So instead of transferring them to a cooling rack, I leave them right in this pan, and I take a clean dish towel, and I cover them like this, okay? So, and leave it just right in the pan on the cutting board, covered to cool. What that does is trap in the steam, softens the top of the buns. Oh, one thing I wanted to see is, yes, we can see the pretzel salt on top. You can also brush carefully though, and my butter's not even melted. I would prefer melted butter, but you can brush, I forgot to melt it. You can brush some more butter on top if you want. I'm not gonna worry about it. It will add a little bit of shine, but I don't wanna knock the salt off. Oh, I'm doing it. I say I'm not going to worry about it, and then I'm doing it anyway. That's me. And my butter should be melted. If your butter was melted, it would be done by now. That's good enough. <laughs> All right. Let them cool for about 30 minutes to an hour, and then they'll be ready to go. It's been about 30 minutes, and I'm going to go ahead and check these. So now... They are softer, okay? And that's exactly what I want. You can let them cool even longer, but I'm serving them with soup today, so the 30 minutes is fine because they're still warm. I'm gonna grab my soup, and the inspiration behind making, because uh, this is the same recipe as my air fryer pretzel bites, but different cooking technique, obviously, and I turn them into buns. But the reason why I made it is because I made this dill pickled soup, and I thought, man, that would go really well with a pretzel roll. Let me show you first, before I break this open, if you wanted to turn them into a hamburger bun, because they would be amazing, just take a bread knife, obviously, and just cut them open like that. Okay? Now I'm gonna use them in my soup, or use it for my soup, so I'm just gonna break off a piece. A little butter, of course. Oh my God. Dip it into the soup. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> Amazing. Mm. The chew of a pretzel. Oh, you get that little bit of salt. Mm. Oh my goodness, these are good. Do yourself a favor. Even if you've never made bread before, make these pretzel buns.